uh, it will be more of the fun kind. I think that is very good at grade six to eight uh, to give an exposure and make it fun. But we uh, really have to make it strong and rigorous curriculum, teachers, sessions. And the NEP has moved away from, you know, kind of very drastic evaluations. But whatever the rigor of the evaluation of other subjects must come into the vocational because only what is evaluated actually happens. We will all recall uh, subjects like, you know, socially useful productive work. I don't remember doing a single thing in that, either social or useful or productive. So we shouldn't uh, let it become a sideline. It has to be very, very rigorous. So this is one point. So while the intention is there, we have to operationalize it in that light. We also, one other good thing about the NEP is talking about this clustering, at least at the higher level, that makes a lot of sense because skill is about hands and we do need good labs, which probably cannot happen at every village level. But if we agglomerate at some level, we can set up really good labs for children, school children to get their hands-on experience. So that, that's a very good thing, but we must make it happen. One fear, which, and I will end with that, is that this must not create, create more silos. For instance, um, it must happen in every school. It is not, skill is not something for uh, government school children. So, uh, you know, the, the, uh, for us to have an oversight that it does happen in every school, the most fancy private school to the village school is very important and not have a division of skills. For instance, uh, fancy schools call, calling coding a skill, whereas for government schools, carpentry is the skill. You know, we, we will further divide and create, uh, you know, hierarchies. Similarly, gender. It is not like tailoring for girls and welding for boys. So, you know, uh, maybe we have to have some way of a child getting solid exposure to more than one skill across domains like this. So th these were my initial thoughts uh, and we'll come back and circle to the action points. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ms. Meena. Uh, since uh, you have opened up a very interesting discussion, I think uh, by bringing in issues related to gender inclusivity and uh, types of skills for whom and uh, what type of, uh, you know, at which age to introduce skills, I would like, uh, I would request uh, Rajesh to carry on this discussion and bring his perspective. I would request Rajesh to talk more about the labor market and, uh, uh, you know, the job market perspective when does it get introduced in the skills and education scenario and what are your views about it? Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Madhuri and the panelists. I was just, uh, when she uh, brought this topic and when she wrote saying that truly uh, independent, and I was just wondering in terms of two days after when we are going to celebrate this independence, what does a true independent means? I mean, uh, is it the true independence are we all happy? Okay, India as an economy is becoming maybe fourth largest, fifth largest. But still, why are we all not happy? Is it because per capita income we are at 120th uh, uh, position? Or is it because our unemployment rate, but unemployment rate is 5 to 6 percent, even if highest among the graduates, so it doesn't affect. But the issue here is we are missing a bod body which is called, uh, which is called as underemployed youth. Out of the 510 million people who is in the workforce today, 350 odd million people are working, but working poor. They earn maybe less than $2 a day kind of a thing. They have inconsistent uh, work demands and they get paid on every work they complete. Only 30% of all of us gets paid on monthly wage. I mean, in terms of at the end of the month, we get salaries, but 350 odd million odd people are underemployed and they get paid uh, only when a work is complete, uh, completed. And these people are the belly of our country. And I feel they have not become independent yet. And that is the crux. And when we confidently say that, oh, the 74th Independence Day is getting celebrated, maybe that this underbelly of our country is actually not independent. Now, how do we, what is the reason that they are struggling with? One, 
they uh, they they are not able to complete the work the work which has to be completed in one day or a two day they just take 10 days five days why maybe lack of skills lack of financing lack of uh, mark connect with the market demand and maybe lack of use of technology into the day to day work which uh, they need to do at this entire aspect of they being underemployed so the word underemployment and that underemployed india cannot be a free india now what do we do i mean in terms of and how do we address this issue of underemployment the problem here is okay we all agree saying that skills and education is required to pull them out of the on the verge of poverty line what they are in today but unfortunately these people whether you call it as a carpenter whether you call it as a painter whether you call it as a construction worker whether you call it as a tailor in a tailor etc they just can't afford to spend that two years to do the technical skills of uh, in an iti or they just cannot afford the opportunity cost associated with them to go in for a technical training is so high and even if they go in for a technical training the guarantee of the wages which they will get post that particular training is still a big concern now it is in this context if you look at how i mean i'm not going back to just ndp and alone how do we integrate this tech work integrated uh, how do we integrate training and education to work to ensure that the underbelly of india which is this 350 million or people is pulled out is going to be important like what uh, minama was talking about i think very important uh, here is today the educational system is for urban high, a person who can take the two years out or a three years out opportunity cost is there it has become very 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 out of reach for this kind of people by bringing in modular structure by bringing in multiple entry multiple exit by bringing in elements of academic credit bank into the uh, thing so that their work can be brought in as credits and in that process how do we ensure a certificate or a diploma or an associate degree or a degree the different uh, points can be given to this youth to ensure he also learns he also earns at the end of the day he also is given a social recognition by so that he obtains a degree is an important uh, step which we need to do to make this underemployed indian a truly free indian okay so with that i think i'll leave it to you madhuri i think maybe we'll i'll come back further uh, in this conversation like you're on mute you're on mute i think okay yeah and it was nice that uh, you have picked up a few points from meena ma'am as well that is the idea of our 70 minute webinar where we pick up from each other and continue the discussion so thank you rajesh for uh, reinforcing the importance of work integrated education which has uh, multiple entry and entry exit options and which is also meant to pull up people who haven't had the opportunity to go for uh, uh, formal uh, other formal forms of education Uh, so i think this is very important and uh, there's no doubt about it but i think in the uh, flow of the conversation now i would invite dr rajesh khambayat uh, who represents india's only institution for technical teacher education which is a part of ncert sir you have been doing wonderful work in this area by training lot of vocational teachers so could you please pick up the thought from meena ma'am and from rajesh and tell us how the school education uh, where the vocational uh, training is being given and where the importance of vocational elements are there how do you think all these connected and then we strive to bring the gap between skills and education uh, between non formal short term training programs and higher forms of education or uh, like meena ma'am was saying it is not for a particular set of people or it is not for a particular group and so on and so forth sir i welcome you to share your uh, thoughts sir thank you thank you dr madhuri madam for uh, giving this uh, wonderful platform to talk to the panelists also to the uh, esteem uh, you know participant for this webinar i think this is a very important area we are all going to discuss in the next few minutes also uh, allow me to make a short presentation to connect uh, what has already been transcribed so that we can connect what is going on the ground and what we are doing 
what we are proposing to do can you uh, can you see my yes sir we can screen now yeah yeah okay so the first of all the topic is uh, very very important for india uh, and i really appreciate uh, this theme as we are uh, celebrating uh, 74th uh, independent day uh, day after tomorrow uh, i'll be very brief as the time is very limited i'll be just going very short on uh, some reality why significance little strengthening what has already been said on education and skill and more important my focus will be how school education can act on it how we are bringing uh, the skill and education together through the vocational education programs in the school and how it can be done so i will give you some workable example also so it will also reflect uh, the the point we are trying to bring together and as you expected some action points uh, and some future uh, plan for us to strengthen our efforts and all that one i think there is no second thought and there is no disagreement that for our modern society of india we need uh, education and skill and it has become a a very important aspect of our development and i think this is the best investment india can do it for our people for our economy and for our uh, even ever emerging society of 21st century it is in fact uh, building the foundation for our uh, social economic prosperity even political stability i will add one more point bring bringing peace in the society again education and skill has a big role to play and that is uh, what we are also trying to emphasize and all that today without education without skill you cannot move out and that's why it has become a master key if you see for your growth if you see for your employment uh, you know ultimately to succeed in your life education and skill has a big role to play and as uh, we are all talking and debating we are basically talking about the new generation who is going to enter into the school premises Uh, whether it is school education or higher education and there are a lot many challenges and issues as uh, rajesh was also highlighting and to address all this thing i think we have to prepare our youth for the future and that's education and skill has a big role to play interestingly i would like to draw attention to two important discussions you know another point is you know we are all uh, uh, planning to make uh, india's economy by 5 trillion by 2024 another uh, special mission which uh, honorable prime minister recently talked about is atmanirbhar bharat and i think when i see both in together education and skill will be important and we have to bring education and skill together to realize this uh, you know 5 trillion economy aspiration and also to make our country atmanirbhar bharat as we celebrate uh, this uh, independent day and all that one Uh, as uh, rightly said by my former uh, panelist that we have already talked about this new education policy so i will not uh, talk about the, that particular issue but you know this policy has uh, highlighted very important elements there are many dimension to the policy but at this point of time you know we have to balance this three aspect one is access and equity it has been talked into the policy it has also talked about the relevance of the education we are providing to the students across india whether it is education at low i mean school to higher education and more importantly it is also focusing on quality education which we are all talking about sustainable development goal 4.0 so quality education will be the fulcrum of what entire effort we are trying to visualize through our national education policy and all that you know coming back to the particular area where we are connecting education and skill together you know uh, already it has been said that uh, atma gandhi ji already talked about the um, you know work based education already talim what we call it as a talim and it has become the the fulcrum for our all the policies dialogues which which has happened in the world so there is a range of uh, you know way this uh, skill and education can work together and i believe that it is a continuum like from class 1 to 5 we can have work experience activities for class 6 to class 8 we can have pre vocational education and finally the formal vocational education program can go from class 9 to class 12 so vocational education along with the general education as we connect skill with education i think there is a three important stage we have to go through 
first is the awareness about the particular you know what we are all talking about it then they let the student explore about it and then prepare themselves for the occupation and the, the sector in which they are all talking about it so basically in awareness uh, we we expect the student to be exposed to various occupations what are the career choices available in the world of work then through the exploration let them know how people are doing what they do what kind of skills are required so that they make their living and finally to participate into the activities that integrate academic skill along with the vocational skills and all that i will give you some example also so that and uh, let me start with the pre vocation as we are talking right now you know pre vocation is basically to identify product activity identify the tools equipments material how production is done how the goods and services are created manipulating the you know uh, activities and all that inculcating socially desirable values among the student like cooperativeness teamwork perseverance tolerance quality consciousness and all that and the most important to me is the dignity of the labor and i think this is most important when we talk about vocational education as it was said earlier that there is a still a mindset to the vocational education and one of the reason was the dignity of the labor was missing among the youth and pre vocational probably will give the respect and also dignity to the people to understand why it is so important and all that there are range of activities small small you know the school education uh, space can do it as easily like agriculture and horticulture sector as you can see soil testing raising seed seedlings plant nursery mushroom cultivation vermicost production so these are all very simple and the teacher and student can work together and propagate the the uh, the basic vocational skills let them explore different sectors and all that similarly like health sector how to prepare the first aid kit how to address immediately the dressing up wounds and bandaging and all that one so let the student understand how the health sector is coming into preparation you know like food manufacturing food processing you know simple confectioneries biscuit cakes uh, jelly jam pickles you know preparation of milk product all small small activities if are exposed uh, uh, to the student i'm sure that will help in a big way even you know the paper mache paper bags uh, uh, paper filing work creating envelope boxes these are all you know giving the respect and also make them you know fine tune their the psychomotor skills and all that one skill development also can be done book binding toy making uh, using from the west all those things small small activities can be introduced into the the from class 6 to class 8 under pre vocational education and this will uh, ed educate and all that like animal husbandry dairying silk warming fish uh, rearing and all that one can do and finally is the formal vocational education that is from class 9 to class 12 now here i would like to bring attention here is that one of the major uh, challenge with the indian student is the employability skills and that's why it is very important that the vocational skill along with employability should be integrated and pss cib has taken this uh, you know major change in the approach to vocational education by introducing employability skills by introducing communication skill ict skill self management skill entrepreneurial skills and green skills and all that one so these are all very very important actions we have taken currently we are working on 17 sectors and these are all uh, emerging sectors of indian economy which has a high potential for growth in terms of employment as well as their sectoral growth is also there so that work already pssciv is doing along with my faculty and consultant and entire team is actually working with us we are getting active support from sector skill council nsdc nsda you know msd all are helping us to see this one today all the curricula are the based on the national occupation standards standard assessment certifications are there there are 27 states and union territories are offering the vocational education program almost 8500 schools are benefiting the student through this vocational education and almost 10 lakhs students are taking the benefit these are very early numbers i am telling you and i am very sure in the coming years uh, these numbers are going to be better so i think i will stop here for the time being and once uh, we go with the discussions and all that then probably i will come back and as um, madhuri rightly said what should be the action point <laughs> we should bring it so that we can have more focused action on this ground and all that
Thank yeah. you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving an overview. Uh, uh, good that uh, you mentioned two or three very important points, which will connect with uh, what Dr. Lena will be saying now from the policy perspective. I think, uh, and again, to carry forward right from what Meena Ma'am said about uh, Mahatma Gandhi's idea of education, craft-centric education, how SUPW was not a useful thing, and then Rajesh talking about the need for educating and skilling people from the bottom of the pyramid and giving them a chance, and then Dr. Rajesh talking about how school-level vocational education can change the entire thing, particularly the uh, preliminary, uh, you know, respect for working with hands. I think working with hands is something that really needs to be given importance. Now let's uh, hear what Dr. Lena has to say from the policy perspective. Now that the new policy is out and we see, uh, Lena, you know, the word vocational comes 76 uh, times in a policy document of 60 pages, which was circulated. So what has this got to do and what does this say? Could you please uh, go ahead and enlighten us? Thank you, Madhuri. One of the good things about following up, following behind several such eminent speakers is that they have highlighted most of the challenges that uh, we discussed in the committee when we were looking at uh, uh, what is the, what are the recommendations for the vocational education that we need to provide. And I have to say that we were quite shocked, actually, to see that, you know, first of all, the so small numbers of people who get vocational education, uh, 12th plan document said less than 5%, maybe it's contested, maybe it's less than 10%, but it's nowhere near the um, 65, 70% of students, of youth who get vocational education in in uh, um, developed countries. So what, what went wrong? We were really not able to, we had to spend a lot of time to actually uh, understand some of these things. And we must be one of the rare countries where, you know, youth are not able to find jobs and industry is complaining that they don't have skilled people. So obviously our education and training system is failing spectacularly, you know. And if after 70 years of independence, we are talking about 10,000 schools having voca offering vocational education and um, about 10 lakh students, then, you know, we have 250 million, you know, students in the in the school system and 15 lakh schools of course that's not a fair statement we should say uh, 300,000 uh, secondary schools okay so most of the schools are primary schools so let's just stay with the uh, 3 lakh uh, secondary schools but that's still if you have 3 lakh secondary schools why is it that after so long we only have 10,000 um, uh, schools that are offering vocational education. So I want to, I mean, many, all the panelists have said many things, so I don't want to repeat what they said. So I'll just focus on something that Dr. Kasuri Rangan said as uh, when someone asked him, what are the, what does he think is the biggest stumbling block for implementing any of these things? And he, and he pointed the fingers, uh, you know, squarely at us the adults in the in the system because he says that what what is needed is a, there is a tremendous gap uh, government officials managements of institutions uh, you know uh, teachers uh, trainers people who run companies uh, training companies all of that there is a tremendous gap in their thinking vis-a-vis -vis what we need for vocational education to succeed and you know the reasons are not uh, have already been mentioned by Rajesh and uh, Meena and everything. We don't want to stream people. We don't want to you know give specific uh, jobs to women. We don't want to give specific jobs to rural people and so on. But we need that enlightened mindset to spread among all the institutions and all the um, you know people working in this sector that we don't do that. So the policy has actually tried to provide some guidelines to uh, address uh, Mina's worry about uh, carpentry versus coding. We are saying that you know there are many surveys that show that rural uh, uh, youth actually prefer to be employed in their local regions. So how do we explore the economic potential of each region and try to find vocations that youth might want to take up in that region is one one way of looking at it but then that could be narrow because many rural regions are not um, very well developed yet 
Um, so, so these are the kinds of considerations that we have to worry about. And Rajesh talked about, you know, wages. And so uh, vocational education will never have the dignity that it ought to have unless the wages improve. And unless, you know, some, we do something about social security for the people, you know, if 90% plus of our country does not have social security, then it's, uh, you know, and that includes the teachers, the trainers, you know, so long before we talked, uh, we are talking about gig economy of Uber and uh, Zomato and so on. But long before that, we have a gig economy in teachers, actually, you know, yes. being paid hourly wages. And, you know, so I don't know, surely, I don't have any understanding of finance and economics and so on, but surely we have the skills in this country to figure out how we can improve the social security for people uh, across the country. So I'll give you, I, I'm wondering about this because it was my own experience that when I was working in Switzerland, uh, people in Switzerland work, uh, can work, choose to work whatever percentage of their time. So if you work 40 hours a week, five days a week, you work 100%, but you could work 80%, which means you can take one day a week off, you could work 70%. And there were women who were working 20% when their children were young, but they were all contributing to their own uh, social security and, and somehow the Swiss government had worked this out. So isn't it possible for us to be enlightened? What we need is a lot of leadership to kind of you know, change. We know what the problems are and the policy is trying to provide the framework within which we can um, uh, uh, solve it, but we need a lot of leadership. So maybe, you know, from here is we could make a beginning actually to start talking about these things and look for solutions. I'll stop here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lena, for sharing your points and also giving the example of the option to work and also the way you connected uh, by giving uh, the an example from Dr. Kasturi Rangan and the issues of mindset that are, uh, you know, involved in thinking of vocational education and giving it the new, the kind of respect it needs. This, I think, connects uh, all the other uh, panelists' views also. So, uh, at this point in time, I would say, uh, you know, we need to look back at few other things also. Maybe when you are sharing your action points, you can also look at few things that I would like to add. Uh, one of the points which we often hear, uh, Meena Ma'am and Rajesh and Dr. Rajesh Khambayat, I think all of you also can look at it. You know, uh, this is to do with saying, yeah, skilling is a market failure. So the industry angle there is definitely on a weak point. And second thing we often hear is that, uh, you know, things like what ails, uh, what is ailing something, what is failing. And so, you know, to overcome all this, I think uh, skilling has to be given a huge push in terms of uh, uh, this webinar is not just a webinar for us. Uh, we, we plan it in such a way that at the end of the webinar, my colleague who's there, Sahitya, she's actually uh, listening to all our conversations. She's there on the panel. Uh, we both sit together and create an article out of this so that uh, we present your views on our website. And also this is open to people so that they can reach out to you or they can use these points in any other format because we want this to be an action-oriented thing. So just before we go ahead with the actions, there are a few questions and points coming from the audience saying uh, it could have helped them if this was in Hindi. I would just like to uh, say a few words in Hindi here. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. आप लोगों ने ये हमसे पूछा कि इसको हिंदी में भी करना चाहिए। हम कर सकते थे, लेकिन इसको करने में शायद थोड़ा अभी तकलीफ होगा। But we will definitely try to plan a session. हम लोग करेंगे आगे चलकर जिसमें आपको शायद यही सब कुछ हिंदी में भी मिलेगा। अभी तो हमारा ये focus है कि skills और education को हम कैसे pass लाएं और इसमें जो भी issues हैं उसको कैसे address करें। uh, so uh, please excuse us, this time we will not be able to uh, do much in Hindi, but we will definitely come back. Uh, so now going back to Meena ma'am, ma'am, please share your three action points. And after this, we'll take questions from the audience, after all your action points. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. It was really enlightening listening to all the panelists. Uh, my quick action points, uh, I think we are all concerned about the status of skills. And so I have two action points which address that. Like we have the world skills, you know, the competitions which are now catching favor. I think we should have something called the school skills. So children who have taken up vocational 
and they, you know, everybody is going to be exposed. Numbers are going to be larger. It must be a very high profile. Maybe the awards to be given by the president at Republic Day or whatever. But I think we have two high profile skills in some way. And this could be one way. So a school skills competition at a national level. Uh, I think children who pass out from 12th vocational, there could be some, again, very well thought through endowed scholarships. Let 10 from every state be going on a very prestigious scholarship to Germany, Korea, Switzerland, wherever the best of their trade is. So, uh, you know, a very competitive uh, state level uh, thing uh, and very high profile. So, you know, all expenses paid. I mean, I think for the next five years, if we work at this, uh, it, it might have an effect. The, the third thing is, you know, I am very confused about this concept called skill university. Now, that doesn't really find a reference in the NEP. States are going ahead and coming out, to, uh, setting up a skill university or at least announcing skill universities. Now, how is all this going to meld with the regular university system? What is this? Uh, what is a skill university? I think we need a national dialogue on figuring out what is a skill university because I can see vaguely what the potential could be in upgrading skills. But nobody, everybody has his own or her own interpretation and nobody is quite clear what's happening. Resources are going to go in. We're going to make big noise. We're going to set up infrastructure. But I fear that it will be done without a clarity of understanding. So I think these are my three uh, initial action points. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing them. Yes, uh, Rajesh, perhaps you can also reflect on uh, what Meena ma'am has just said and take it forward. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, she mentioned Skill University. I mean, lights just... Uh... <laughs> so, but I think see, I think we should stop churning out graduates for the sake of churning out graduates in our university system. I think that's very very fundamental to this. We uh, I, over a period of years we have been saying that let us all pray to just one God, which is called work, and that is going that should trigger off what should be the content, what should be the pedagogy, what should be the framework, so that we just don't uh, we we just churn out people who will be productive and who can earn with their skills and education combined. So that's very important. This uh, the action point, and I still feel these are very vague ones, but very clear one is the stigma attached to the vocational training. The often used phrase is, uh, vocational training is made for I mean, like not for uh, our things, and which got reflected in whatever the earlier uh, Dr. Reena and you know was talking about, but I'm saying this: How do we ensure that the stigma takes off? Is a very important element which public policy can bring in. And I don't think any amount of on the ground implementation of this will work. It is more of how how does that image or a stigma which is attached uh, goes off. But coming back to the if if you are, if you ask three big points, one, I think inclusiveness. For this entire uh, scheme should now make it more inclusive for the rural, for the people who want part-time work, for the people who want work integrated training. That should be the first one. The second one is in terms of the flexibility. Please don't put a gun on my, our head and say, please come to the classroom to study. No. There are the, we, we should be able to study online. We should be able to study practicals by doing work. We should be able to study through listening, observing, etc. Measure us on any point of view, but bring in that level of flexibility. Third, financing. Nobody is asking for government to fund through the taxpayers' money for at least education. If something has to be given free into this country, please put all the money into the school system. Make it high on quality, make it high on everything else. But as we move up the ladder, this financing is a critical part. And financing can come from two to three parts. One, employers can fund financing. If they are work integrated, a lot of employers can, be, as they earn wages, we can bring it back to uh, study. Second, there are a lot of CSR funds, which can fund in for the, uh, at least short-term skilling, whichever is there. And third is loans. Okay, today, the loans, banking, educational NPAs may be the highest of the NPAs, but if we are able to pray for just one God called work, I think a lot of these issues uh, uh, in terms of the loans and other things, what we're taking uh, will be sorted out. So to, in my mind, how three actions will be inclusiveness, flexibility, 
and the financing part, if it is sorted out, this will be a wonderful scheme to get it executed. Thanks. Okay, thank you for sharing your three action points. Uh, uh, Dr. Rajesh Kambayat, uh, sir, could you please share your points? You made a wonderful presentation from the schooling perspective. I think all the initiatives and the points that you mentioned can be mostly implemented and it also answers some of the uh, rather uh, adds on and reinforces the points made by earlier speakers about the dignity of labor, about working with hand and so on. So I think we will expect a lot of, uh, you know, very solid action points from you, uh, maybe the under three categories, which we can take it forward, uh, you know, in a big way. Okay. <laughs> First of all, once again, thank you, Dr. Madhuri, for uh, uh, kind words of appreciation. You know, it's all entire team of PSSCIB who is behind this. I am only, you know, the front face of it. But there are many fa experts, faculty, industry experts. They are all giving their wisdom and thoughts, uh, propagate further actions and all that. Now, coming back to action, you know, because the, the actions are very limited numbers you have given. So I will focus uh, the priority, which is very, very important. And as you say, I'm focusing on the, the school education, and where what critical action could be there. Having in this field for uh, last 30 years, and particularly in this vocational education for last three years, having interacted with a range of you know, stakeholders, yeah, India and outside India, I feel what is really need to be done on the ground so that we can see the change. And I propose a couple of points. The first uh, very important point, I think my other uh, panelists also talked in a different terms or different language, is the image building. But, but when I say image building, means making vocational education aspirations. And that is one of the challenge for India, how to make vocational education aspirational for such a diverse country like us as uh, Rajesh was also talking about inclusiveness, rural, urban, uh, you know, boys, girls, everybody is there. So how to make vocational education really aspirational? So it's a big challenge for all of us. And this is where we have to really work on it. Right? And uh, Madam Meena rightly said about, uh, you know, different advocacy. And I'm very happy to tell you that there are already state taking very good initiative, making vocational education aspirational. I'll, I'm also happy to share today you that uh, we'll be also hosting a skill mela, basically to showcase what are the good practices on vocational education done by the state and showcasing the talent by the students who has, you know, uh, gained the skill in different occupations. So we are going to create a platform at a national level where all the state, all the union territories offering vocational education program come together, showcase so that you know that message gets loud and clear how that aspirational value is coming into vocational education to the people. Second thing is I have visited some of the schools and when I see that even a small investment has already made by the states and by the central government. But looking to you know rising demand, particularly ICT, particularly skill training, and as we look for future skill requirement, there is a lot to be done on upgrading the facility. As uh, I was listening to one of the panelists saying, comparing other countries who are uh, much ahead in offering skill training, vocational education to a large number of population. Compared to that, our infrastructure really needs a good boost. And as uh, Rajesh said, that public-private partnership, you know, CSR activity can further boost up upgrading and upscaling this uh, infrastructural this will be very important because once the infrastructure is well in place, student will be very much attractive. It will really bring the aspirational value. It will also give a new dimension to what we are trying to teach through vocational education. And student will be more keen to explore and understand all those things. Third action point I feel is that, you know, every Monday I meet new teachers from different part of India. Practically all India, not only India, across India, overseas also. And I feel still there is a lot to be done on the mindset of the teachers. Because the first change which can bring in the mind of the students is the teachers. 
So until and unless teacher give value to vocational education, nothing is going to happen. But I am also here to submit here is that you know, the when I look at the the pay conditions, the service conditions of the vocational teachers across India, it is really pathetic. I'm telling you, I get lots of numbers. I mean, WhatsApp, uh, phone call, every everything, and highlighting the pathetic condition in the states the vocational teachers are there. So if you really want to bring vocational in the fun front, it is equally important that we need not only to build their capacity, but we, we give due recognition and due understanding to the pay condition and service conditions of these people so that they are really you know, committed and they have a long association with vocational education. That is very important. And that's why the last point with Madam permission I would like to add here is fourth point is we have to really develop practices and procedure to drive change. Until and unless this is not done, I think we'll be only talking and talking. I'm also happy to tell you, as I shared you some slides here, our institution has developed a guideline document on introducing pre vocational education, which is under review at NCRT. Once it is finalized, this particular guideline will be rolled out across India. So in the light of the national education policy, all the schools will be introducing pre vocation from class six to class eight. So these are all you know, action points I uh, would like to submit. And uh, I stop here again and then come back again. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir, for sharing the action points. Uh, and they really are, uh, you know, not only action points, I think that is also laying the roadmap, I think, in a way to make it aspirational. And we from NSN, for us, it is our goal and motto to make skilling aspirational. As you see, it's a tagline. We work every day, day in, day out. For years, we have been doing it. So thanks again. That uh, helps us also in realizing that we are on the right path. Uh, now coming to uh, Dr. Lena. Uh, so Dr. Lena, could you please share your action points and also uh, maybe uh, go back and think about all the other action points that we got. Perhaps if you want to add a few more, that's also fine. Uh, you're mute. So I'll begin with um, talking about something Meena mentioned. She doesn't understand skilled universities. <laughs> I sort of share her uh, um, uh, concern. The reason skill universities came up is because uh, of being able to give out a piece of paper, a certificate, you know, and a, a, a bachelor's degree, which is extremely aspirational in India. I know Rajesh said, let's stop graduating people for the sake of graduation. And that is correct, that we should actually um, uh, uh, you know, sort of make the, the bachelor's degree count. But you see, we also have the challenge that people actually tell us. So I have been working with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences on uh, to document some of their work. They have two very excellent uh, skills program. One of them is to upskill people in BA, BSc, BComs by giving them summer courses uh, on uh, employability and uh, soft skills. Uh, which is already 20,000 plus students in five years. And similarly, another one is uh, the School of Vocational Education, where they are doing uh, apprenticeship-based uh, BVOC courses. But even there, when we did a survey, people said uh, we would prefer this course to be called something else. Mm -hmm. so, so the desire to mainstream, the desire to not be seen as uh, uh, you know, just pure vocational education is very high. And so the skills universities, uh, hopefully with uh, the education policy getting implemented and universities starting uh, to integrate vocational education into their offerings, we may not need the skills universities. But you see, this is uh, easier said than done because the mindset problem comes in. And so many universities are looking at, you know, how you hire an assistant professor or an associate professor in some subject to offer some course. But you see, they're not understanding the intrinsic dynamism of the skill sector, which means that, you know, the courses, the course offerings will have to change continuously and be upgraded continuously. So, you know, hiring someone and giving them a tenure job, how many can you hire? I mean, if you have uh, 19 sectors of the economy that you're looking at to offer, then are you going to hire faculty in those uh, things? So in some ways, the, the you know, the contract... Um, 
employment of teachers is going to stay but i agree with professor kambai that the, you know how do you within this setup how do you give respect to teachers and trainers this is something that uh, is a very big challenge for us uh, so i think my i would add only two two action points and one of them is to um, say that we need you know a lot of lot of uh, uh, thinking and effort into into um uh you know this uh, the stigma associated with with uh, vocational education don't forget this is riding on top of an extremely caste ridden society so we have kind of internalized so much divisions that you need people need to step away from that and stop classifying you know everything as this is higher than this and you know we we do it all the time in our heads that this is better and you know creating class hierarchies on top of class the caste hierarchies so i would say that we we need a collective commitment to excellence the quality of skills training in the country today is really poor let me just be outspoken and say that i mean of course there are outliers and there are good things but they only go to prove the rest which is that most of the skills courses are very short term about check boxing you know you're not thinking about the holistic development of the child the human being there is there is a person who can use their initiative and they need a holistic in, in education and and you're not thinking about that you're you're just you know sort of contractually uh, uh, you know based on read write and minimum hand hand practical training you're doing a course and saying okay we are done and then they don't get employed and then we are surprised you know so we need a collective commitment to uh, to excellence and we need enormous amount of outreach to to people everywhere to say that and so maybe we can create professional uh, communities of teachers and support them and Uh, you know talk to them and so on but it's really outreach 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 thank you very much yeah. thank you uh, thank you dr lena uh, yes outreach and i think uh, we have also traveled a kind of a journey in the last one hour by listening to all of you and uh, you are all working on the ground and taking up so many initiatives and uh, doing a lot of work with so many stakeholders so i think for all of us uh, who are listening to uh, this conversation watching you it's been a pleasure to learn first of all and i see lot of comments uh, in terms of appreciation for the conversation that's happening but i would also request the attendees uh, to share their questions we have just about 10 minutes we can take few questions and uh, once again i wish to thank all those who have joined us on youtube live there are 100 plus people who are watching us live on youtube and i see that most of them are i think from schools uh, school teachers perhaps vocational teachers that's what and they are also uh, you know sharing their appreciation and uh, Uh, maybe few points that they would like us to consider so before looking at that i have just one question to all the panelists since i think uh, uh, one of the areas where we need to work very hard to make it um, uh, you know uh, to make it uh, aspirational i would ask you what is the role of technology like uh, is that is that uh, you know something like if we make it very technology enabled some things some jobs are going to be aspirational uh, or do you think there is a role for technology anybody please okay can i okay go ahead doctor you take it up take it up you are the right okay let me start the point here you know technology is something you know we start our day with technology am i right we end our day with technology even while we are sleeping there is some technology which is monitoring us even your cell phone is you know monitoring how good sleep we had and all that so we are all you know our uh, the way we work the way we live the way we play the way we study everything is encompassing technology so technology is already there only thing is how we integrate it how we you know utilize the potential of technology for promoting vocational education is very very important there are many simulations available now particularly health sector i remember i was on a visit to one of the it school in singapore and i found that a state of art simulations being used in health sector 
initially i was little hesitant to see it. i mean reluctant to understand that how can health sector can have all this thing but when i see the power of technology particularly transferring the skills making student understand the every intricacy about the health science the health education and what is the role of a, the the medical professional staff what he or she has to do it and how technology is helping them to acquire all these things so i was very amazed to see all that and i feel that Ma madhuri madam you rightly said that you know if we can bring technology in some of the sector there might be some hardcore sector like automotive will be there some element definitely can technology can support but there will be some areas where technology may not be of so much of use but technology will definitely you know encourage student to take up it will catalyze you know particularly to make the student to learn something today even automotive sector is entirely technology based there is a microchip is there it will tell how is the health of your car gone are the days where you go to the roadside shop and get your vehicle get repaired now that microchip will tell you what is the problem in your vehicle and how it should be done so we are entering into this industry 4.0 where technology is going to play a big role so definitely technology has to be encouraged even in this uh, lockdown period you know in the covid 19 in the post covid also we are thinking particularly it sector i see finance sector i see retail sector you know marketing uh, retail sector and all that so this has come in a big way and this has really helped because of the technology so definitely if the technology is available teachers are trained to use this technology student have access to this technology definitely it will be a, a good change uh, in uh, vocational education and all that in fact we can outreach as we were talking about inclusivity reaching out to a larger audience technology will definitely be a big role can play into this one i feel so thank you yeah thank you thank you sir yeah anyone uh, uh, rajesh would you want to say yeah. something or uh, meena ma'am <laughs> So sorry. So this, uh, so what I completely agree. I mean, the use of technology for learning. I mean, that is one part of how to view it. But also view. Uh, also, if you look at the perception in terms of our existing workforce, look at a carpenter. If today he uses his regular old time tools, can he move into power drilling? Can he use a Bosch machine for power drilling, etc.? It's an embracing of technology, and that is very important if he has to earn more. we are in an informal sector gig economy that means he has to finish the work faster he has to embrace technology he can, we cannot run away from that from that particular fact now the key question is how do we ensure that the power machines or in the case of carpentry the power machines are brought to this guy and how do we train him or how do we make him align and give him work accordingly is a key question and that's a different topic of how do we embrace technology into the vocational uh, system or in the informal sector but completely agree without technology we cannot think of increasing our per capita income yeah uh, yeah meena ma'am any uh, any observations from you uh, yeah i i what i'd like to say is that technology is one more tool in the toolbox of uh, uh, craftsman of a skilled craftsman increasing uh, in importance uh, very important in some skills but again uh, you know we need to strike that balance technology very important can make it aspirational but again there are hand skills which are very very important so let's not kind of devalue one for the other so okay. yes and no okay yeah lena you have so, any yeah yeah just i just wanted to quickly add to what has already been said you know there are two revolutions that we missed in this country the computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing because we did not induct technology quickly enough into all of these you see precision engineering and precision manufacturing is being done completely computer controlled so there are very highly paid jobs lots of skills lots of training to do so we really need to look into that space the other space i wanted to just touch upon is the uh, is about creating digital content to supplement the practical training of young people so you know today automobiles are so sophisticated so if you had di digital content showing how the insides of that thing worked uh, 
then it would be a great starter of or uh, you know sort of baseline setting for a student who is going into automobile engineering you know and uh, that is true about every every field that so we need a repository of high quality digital content that can supplement the practical training that people have you may train on only a small part of the automobile but knowing how the entire thing works together is a very very valuable knowledge to have because then it helps the student move in their um, you know uh, work actually so these two things i would say digital repository of digital content is very important thank you thanks again uh, yes uh, i'm sure technology is definitely going to play a very important role and we have seen it in the last 3 to 4 months how we had to take over uh, you know uh, take uh, make use of technology just to continue the initiatives because of the covid uh, pandemic and we have seen it happening there are few questions couple of them are very generic so i don't think it makes sense to take them up now you have already answered them uh, so i would request the people who are asking questions like uh, how vocational courses can be implemented in schools and so on uh, to go back and see uh, the presentation made by dr rajesh khambayat and we also invite the attendees to reach out to us so that we can connect you with the right person if you need any help that's one thing we do uh, with all the webinars so in case you would like to reach out to pss cib bhopal we can always help you in reaching out to the right person in the organization similarly at labornet or with uh, uh, dr leena or dr Me uh, miss meena from uh, gmr varlakshmi foundation so please let us know uh, so i think to conclude this uh, wonderful session that we had uh, with all of you uh, this morning Uh, again um, a big thank you on behalf of my entire team and uh, in terms of learning i think uh, this was one of the uh, most rich sessions uh, in terms of learning where we are trying to bridge the gap between skills and education in a country as complex as india we seem to have simplified many many narratives in the last 70 plus years india doesn't have a simple answer to any uh, issue that but we have done that so now let's look back uh, restart in the next uh, year in the next uh, when, after 74th independence day and restart new dialogues discussions and come up with more action points so i wish to thank uh, ms meena ragunathan from gmr varlakshmi foundation Mr. Rajesh Ayer from uh, Labornet, uh, uh, Professor Rajesh Khambayat from PSS CIV Bhopal, and Ms. Lina Wardia from ORF. Thanks a lot for being with us today and uh, helping us learn from you. As I said, uh, we uh, we create an article out of all the discussions we had today. I'll be sharing this with you. Thanks again and have a great day. And I would love to be in touch with all of you. Thanks.